Welcome to Slash Detroit for Wednesday, August 21st, 2013. Today's episode is brought to you by the bus that Southeast Michigan is preparing to throw city clerk Janice Winfrey underneath. The state of Michigan runs our schools, our city's finances, and will soon enough run Belle Isle. So why not throw our elections into Lansing's hands as well? Yesterday, the Wayne County Board of Canvassers punted to the state their responsibility of certifying our primary elections results after they couldn't quite figure out what to do with 20,000 or so votes. The problem stems from the city clerk's office not making sure that the state recommended method of tallying votes was executed in the August 6th mayoral race. Basically, election inspectors were supposed to use tally marks, you know, one, two, three, four, and a slash for five, to indicate how many votes were cast for write-in candidates. Well, about half the precincts used the recommended method, and about half didn't. That has led to about half of Mike Duggan's votes being tossed. What's more interesting than this little technical fiasco is the way the Duggan and Napoleon camps are handling it. You would think that both camps might take the high road, considering they both still will move on to the general election. But no, as the great political commentator Bubba Sparks once said, it's getting ugly up in here, up in here. Duggan called the situation a dirty trick and said it was Napoleon's people that carried it out. Napoleon spokesman Jermaine Dickens said, It just seems like the deck was stacked against Benny Napoleon. All along, you'd expect the damn clerk's office to play it down the middle. So now we're left with Duggan's camp accusing Napoleon's camp of trying to disenfranchise 20% of the voters, and Napoleon's camp implying that someone stuffed the ballot. These are some pretty big accusations, considering the simplest explanation is that some poll workers didn't follow some instructions. Hanlon's Razor is a principle that states that one should never attribute to malice that which is adequately explained by stupidity. But in Detroit politics, sometimes it can be tough to tell. Poor Lisa Howes. She should have made the news. She was the first person to announce a run for the mayor's office, and yesterday she was the first of the defeated candidates to endorse one of the remaining two. She threw her support, and perhaps the support of many of her 4,500 voters, behind Mike Duggan. But she did it right as the fiasco downtown was unfolding. Then last night, five men kicked down her door before being scared off by her neighbors. Which leads one to wonder, who does Lisa Howes have to strangle with her bare hands to get on the news? I'm thinking, oh, I don't know, maybe, uh, Charlie LaDuff? In non-election news, the Woodward Avenue Action Association is raising money on CrowdRise.com to buy the Highland Park buildings where Henry Ford first produced the Model T. The buildings have sat deteriorating for decades and are a bit of an embarrassment to Highland Park in Detroit. The group needs to raise $125,000 more to purchase the buildings, which it eventually plans to rehab and turn into an automotive shrine. In the first 24 hours of the auction, more than $7,000 have been raised. In sports, the Tigers lost to the Minnesota Twins in a rather unremarkable way. The score was 6-3. They get another swipe at the Twin Cities tonight at 7 o'clock.